Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us on this absolutely exciting occasion. Uh, my name is Jayati Murthy. I'm president of Oregon State University, and I am absolutely thrilled to be here today as we welcome OSU's 32nd head coach, Trent Bray. Uh, thank you, Scott, for your leadership and expert judgment as we completed our process to name a coach that's already inspired and is galvanizing Beaver Nation. And thank you to DHR Global for your counsel during this search. Uh, I've already received all kinds of positive feedback uh, from all across Beaver Nation. Beaver Nation is thrilled, and it clearly recognizes Coach Bray's accomplishments and enormous potential. As we look ahead uh, to this new era in Beaver football, I can't think of anyone better to lead our team as we continue to build on its current success uh, and momentum. Uh, Coach Bray puts the well-being of our students and the success of our student athletes first and foremost, and that is entirely in keeping with what we do at Oregon State University. So congratulations, Coach Bray, and go Beavs. is right. It's, it is a great day to be a Beaver, and certainly for our student athletes and, and all of Beaver Nation, uh, great news today, and, and I know everybody's looking forward to this. Let me first thank President Murthy, as well as uh, DHR for their, their involvement, but particularly President Murthy for your confidence and trust as we went through the search, and a special thanks to our Deputy AD, Kimya Massey, who was involved in the process as well. Our unique circumstances and the current college athletic landscape necessitated our swift and thorough search. We were able to condense the process without impacting our due diligence. We attracted an excellent pool of candidates who we knew pretty well. And in the process, we were open for business with what I believe was one of the best jobs available in college football. Why? Number one, because we're a top 20 football program. We've been to three straight bowl games. We have a fan base that is unmatched in the West and perhaps beyond that. We have a wonderful new stadium facility and other complimentary facilities to go with it. And we have a commitment to continue to be a power five program. And, and this, uh, this program and our student athletes deserve that. Uncertainty aside, our plan was articulated to the candidates and it resonated with them greatly. As I think about coaches' searches, I've always put a premium on the trust and the connection that a coach can build with a student athletes. Let me double down on that notion for a minute. Given the uncharted waters that we're navigating, that connection and trust is even more important than it's ever been. As I've watched Coach Bray work, and I've gotten to know him even more through the process here of late, it is incredibly evident that we have a new leader that values that connection and that trust building with the student athletes. And he won't settle for the status quo either. He has a great belief in himself and this program. And it's back with a plan to take the next steps for this program's success. His passion and energy are palpable and he absolutely loves this place. The care factor he has for our student athletes is real. I've seen it firsthand. His football intelligence, let me tell you, is off the charts. The great De Dennis Erickson said this about him. Trent has one of the best football IQs I've ever been around, both as a player and a coach. So, Beaver Nation, with that, let me introduce to you our own number 44 and your new head football coach, Trent Bray. Thank 
As I said, number 44. There you are, buddy. What's really impressive is it looks like you could still fit it in the car. You're on my brother. I'd be able to go about two plays. <laughs> I just want to express my appreciation uh, to Coach, uh, to Scott Barnes, um, President Murphy, the DHR Global, everyone that's involved, uh, the players, uh, the players and the, the reception they gave me last night when I was announced. Um, just the, this university, this town, uh, there's not a place I want to be. Um, I've said that before. I've, I've never had an interest in leaving this place. Uh, it means a great deal to me. Um, the, the community, the, the friends that I have, the relationships I've made as a, as a student athlete here, as a coach here, I'm just very appreciative to everyone involved. And I'm excited about this opportunity because I feel what we've done over the last couple years with Coach Smith and the, the place he's left this program for me to take over is in great position. Um, and we are excited to keep this thing moving and compete at a championship level and a top 25 level. And that, that's the expectation. And our kids are ready for that fight. Um, I am ready for that fight. Our administration's ready for that fight. So I can't say thank you enough for this opportunity to lead this program that I love and am so committed to. Thank you very much. Trent, um, a year ago you said you didn't want to be a head coach. What, what's changed in the last year? Last year, the, 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 it was kind of the question was, are you open to being a head coach? And to me, that was, am I looking to be a head coach somewhere? Uh, I was not. Um, I wanted to stay at Oregon State and continue what we've done here. When the opportunity was presented to be the head coach at Oregon State, that's when it became a real, okay, this is what I want to do. This is the program I want to lead. The only program I would want to be a head coach at. And so I'm very excited for this opportunity. Uh, Trent, obviously you had a lot of players come out over here. Sorry. Oh, there you obviously go. you had a lot of players come out in support of you. They wanted you to be the guy. What does that mean to have that back into the players? Uh, like I said, I just appreciate them. It means a ton because that's what we do this for. That's what we coach for is the players. And, and our job is to help them be better versions of themselves. And so to have them feel that I'm the guy to do that and the trust that they have in me to do that um, was remarkable, and I appreciate them very much. Uh, Trent, over here. Um, you said last night when you met the students that you would not be coaching in the bowl game? Is yeah, as of right now, just the, all the work that I have to get done to, to build a staff, uh, recruiting, uh, I don't feel that I can give the correct amount of time to these players. Um, that they need to go out and play the way they're capable of playing and have total trust in Coach Cafense and the rest of the coaches that are here to, to lead them on the field. And I'm very anxious and looking forward to watching them play. Um, speaking of recruiting, my last question. What is your philosophy when it comes to recruiting? We're, we're going to be aggressive. Um, we're going to be aggressive in, in trying to acquire talent. Um, That's a surprise, aggressive. <laughs> 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 you know, we, we feel this is a great place. And there's a lot of great stuff because of a lot of people um, being gracious in their donations and their support. Um, we got great facilities, great coaches, and that's only going to get better. Um, the coaching staff is going to be remarkable. I'm excited about the guys that are interested. And the interest that I've had, just hundreds of texts and calls of interest from people all over the country. And so I'm excited about what we're going to build here and, and continue to build here. Trent, how long will it take for you to, to build a coaching staff? And of the guys that did not go to Michigan State, how many of them do you plan to keep? Uh, I've talked to a couple um, about, about staying, and, and they have expressed to me they want to. I'll probably build an offensive staff faster, uh, being the opposite side of the ball. I can sell the defense. I know what we're going to do. Um, but we'll try to put it together as fast as it needs to be done. Without, We're not going to rush it and put together a staff that's not 100% the right staff. And uh, I feel confident that we'll get that done. Jonathan, um, we talked a lot to him about uh, kind of what his conversations were like um, with um, Athletic Director Barnes, uh, uh, just about what the future looks like for this program. Were you involved, um, how involved were you kind of with those conversations and how much have you kind of learned in the last um, less than 24 hours about kind of what you need to do now stepping into this role for the future of this university? 
Scott laid out a perfect picture of where this university is and where is it's going. Um, and that was a big selling point to me when we first sat down about, you know, the strength of where we're at and where we're going and, and what we can do here in the future. And that's the big reason that I'm sitting here today is because I, I believe in what's going on here. I believe in what our administration's doing, the fan base is doing, the players that we have here to play, and excited to get it done. Trent, how will you shift around coaches? Some may have left, so you got a positions to fill to prepare for the bowl game. There's a group of coaches that have committed to staying through the bowl game, um, and I'm appreciative to them to do that. And then we'll, we'll maneuver around that um, as, as we bring coaches in that have to do their work here at Oregon State. But they, they have been committed to finishing out this process with them. Coach, obviously, you had the opportunity to potentially remain as just the defensive coordinator here at Oregon State. What made you feel like you were ready to take that next step and be the head coach of this program? Uh, a little bit of a sense of responsibility to this place to, to, for its care, um, to make sure that this place continues to go in the direction that we know this place is, which is a, a top program in the country. And so when I was offered that, that responsibility to, to make that happen, I took great pride in getting that done. Trent, uh, you mentioned recruiting, but how important will it be to re-recruit um, members of the current roster? How much time will you be spending on doing that, and what will your pitch kind of be to the current members of the roster to stick around? I think that's college football in general nowadays. You, you've got to recruit your roster every year just as hard as you recruit new players to your roster. Um, and it's, it's really painting a picture for them of, of where we're going and what we're going to do and making them feel good about the place that they're in. And then... And then from there, it's, it's the trust and relationships that you build that you hope make them want to stick around. They feel valued in your program. Trent, you made a, <clears throat> excuse me, you made a comment last night to the players about the college football playoff. Mm -hmm. Now you felt like the program is as close as it's ever been. What leads you to believe that? How much of a selling point will that be to players and recruits? I hope it's a big one because I, I truly believe it with, with uh, you know, what we've done, the, the players that are in this building right now, we are, we are more than capable of getting to the college football playoff with this expansion next year. And we're excited to go out on the field and do it. And I think they're excited to, to take that step with me. And I'm excited to take it with them. Trent, you're obviously a, an OSU alum. Specifically, how is that helpful in this position, especially at this point in time uh, for the program? I, I think it's, it's always a good thing when you know this place. Um, you know how it operates. You know, you know its strengths. You know the things that you've got to improve. Uh, I think that's probably my biggest advantage, uh, knowing this place, the landscape, what it's like to recruit here. I've recruited here for many years. Um, and then the relationships with the players and the community and, and the fan base is a tremendous asset of mine and continuing to push that and make this place better. It seems like uh, last night when um, you were announced as head coach uh, to the team in the video, I mean, you got a very big round of applause, even some hugs before you even got to say a single word. Uh, just what is that? What was that emotional uh, feeling like? And what does it mean to you to kind of have that reaction from the players, knowing that the mood in this room would be a lot different now if you weren't sitting in a, your seat? Yeah, that was that was a big part in my interest in this is, is one, again, the players is where it started, um, making sure that w I took care of them and, and this university. And so it was overwhelming, to, to be honest, when, when that was the reception. Um, and very thankful to them for having that belief in me. Scott, when will you release the schedule for next season? If you could talk a little bit about the process of putting that together. Yeah, a little bit like herding cats uh, right now. But um, very soon, um, it, it's uh, a model that would be six group of five, five power fives, and then an FCS which, uh, as, as Trent and I have talked about, is a really exciting path to, to an expanded playoff uh, potential spot. Um, what will happen is we'll have an announcement of a bulk of that soon. And then until the ink dries, you don't really, can't really announce games. So there will be a couple that trickle in afterwards. So you'll, you'll hear an announcement very soon on a portion of that. Trent, there was a press conference yesterday at Michigan State where the coach seemed to really emphasize that you know he was at a place where he can he truly believed that he can build a winner my question is one when did you know that he was going to be leaving and do you truly believe that you can build a winner here i'll start with the latter yeah i truly believe we can we can continue to build a leader a winner here um, i think we've proven to 
over the last couple of years to be capable of doing that. Um, I, I found out real late in the process, um, you know, and, and it, it didn't sit quite right with me, which is why I wasn't in a hurry to get on the plane when he asked me to go. Um, and then when I was presented this opportunity, I, I stayed even longer and wanted to hear this out and see where this could go and uh, best decision I'd made. Scott, um, you mentioned Trent being, you know, a player's coach, having that connection with the players. How many conversations did you have with those guys uh, on an individual group basis and how much did that influence your decision to, to promote Trent? You know, you, you always start when you're searching for a coach. You start with with the uh, leadership capacity, the integrity, the fundamentals. But when you when you look at uh, the assets that a coach brings, and and I said it uh, more than once, the connection now more than ever with the transfer portal, this sort of uh, free agent uh, marketplace that's occurred because of NIL absent guardrails and a transfer portal that was absent any uh, specific windows until recently uh, makes it even more important to have that those relationships. I've, I've uh, obviously been around Trent for six years, and I've watched him uh, work as I, as I connected with our student athletes. Um, and, and I, you know, to be honest with you, uh, Trent's relationship with the student athletes you see every day, so it wasn't a surprise. So whatever I heard from the student athletes, and we had several meetings. We had team meetings, we had more individual meetings, smaller group meetings, uh, that, that comes out in spades. What influence that has at the end of the day, when you check the box on all the other things you need, uh, what rises to the top is that. And I'll, I'll say it again, given today's marketplace and the, the situation we're in, not at, not at Oregon State, in college athletics, that relationship means more than anything. When you couple that with Trent's uh, chops, if I could say, I mean, you'd look at his pedigree. Dad was a coach. He's been mentored by some of the best in college football history. And, and you look at the uh, results on the field, all of that plays into it. But it does go back uh, to an important element, and that is his connection. And, and I want to say this about it, because he and I have had a lot of conversations. Um, and I was taken aback, really, Trent, by by how close uh, those relationships are. He works at it, and it's sincere. This isn't somebody that's just uh, blowing smoke. He, he has a deep, sincere care factor, as I call it, for those student athletes. And they know that. And, and uh, if you're blowing smoke about that, you're gonna, they'll, they'll, they'll see right through it. So this is a genuine care factor that Trent has for this place, uh, generally, and for, the, for these student athletes. And because of that, there's a trust level uh, between them that I don't see very often. Trent, uh, over, over here. Um, down, down the f final few weeks, there's some players that are a little unhappy with how Jonathan went about going and getting this other job. Are, are there some fences that you'll need to mend with some of these players, and how, how would you go about doing that? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the, the good thing is I have experience in this field um, as a player. I, had a, I went through a coaching change where we won too many games and our coach took off. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, so I have some experience in that. And, yeah, there, there's initial anger and, and all those things, but I, I think it goes back to the trust that's built over time that I've been fortunate enough to build with a lot of these guys. It's, it's a little easier to mend those fences when there's trust and belief that's already here. So it, it, it hasn't been too hard. Conversations have been really good. They like it here. Um, I, I mean, I'll give Coach Smith a ton of credit. He, he built a great program where these kids feel valued and, and welcome. And so every player on the team. So we continue to, to push that forward, that, that kind of culture that the team has, um, and, and hopefully take it to the next step. Coach, you've been a part of this program now for a majority of your life back here. But to be here at this part of your life, the head coach, is this a dream position for you at your time? Yeah, because I, I think this is, like I said earlier, this is the only university that I'd want to be the head coach at. Um, and there were other opportunities to go coordinate and do all that, which I love. I love coordinating and, and hands-on, day-to-day coaching. But the opportunity to lead this place, uh, especially, I, th I think real leaders show up when times are hard. And we're, we're in a, a little bit of a tough situation with, with everything that's happened over the last year in college football. And to me, that made it so much more important that I, that I step in the fight and help this place.
This is a question for Scott, but it could be for Trent as well. Did you find any candidates with trepidation over the situation uh, that, that the school is in right now? And for Brent, same thing, or for Trent, same thing. Any, any thoughts of trepidation about the immediate future? Yeah, obviously uh, uncertainty, but, but what's different is when you get in the room with each of these candidates, uh, and we had a, a great pool of candidates, as I'd mentioned earlier, and you're able to articulate a plan, uh, honestly a plan that I can't, I can't get into the specifics with publicly, but I can talk more about and lean into in private, it resonated, both uh, how we're going to fund ourselves, uh, what our schedule looks like, and what our, our goals are. And so uh, no trepidation. In fact, you have a preconceived idea because of what you read as to what might be the circumstances. And once we broke it down for him, everybody leaned into it and embraced it. And I think, I think Trent did as well. Absolutely. Hey, Coach, um, <clears throat> when you talk about the relationship with the players, did you see that modeled by your own dad when you were a young man, having players of the house, building relationships when you were a kid and saw that? And, other coaches, maybe mentor-type coaches that influenced you along those lines? Yeah, I've said it forever. Uh, both my football knowledge and the way I go about my work, the foundation came from my father um, and watching him and seeing how he interacted with his players, um, the, the care that was, that was taken for them, not just as a football player but as a person. And so that's always kind of been my model of how I move in this business. And then I've been fortunate enough to have a ton of other mentors along the way that, that were very similar and and Coach Riley, Coach Erickson, Coach Banker, that, that it was more than just football, and it is. And, and I think when the players believe that you care about them more than just as what they can do, a stat line, I think that's when real trust and um, you know, belief is, is built, and that's a huge part of this game. <laughs> you saw the... Uh, the, the, the sort of a grassroots effort in the nil world on, uh, you know, uh, 44 for Bray, Bray for whatever exactly it was. It gained a lot of momentum quickly in that space, in that world. I, you know, I know that happened in part separate from you and your own input, but it was organic. What did that mean and how important is that space right now for, for what you're going to do here? I, I think just the excitement in, in the program, you know, especially over the last couple of days, there was a little bit of worry with Coach Smith taking off. But I think just the excitement in the program uh, is good for this place. It's good for the, the, the players to, to realize that th this fan base cares and they're still excited about what's going on here. And, and there is life after Coach Smith. And uh, so I think it was, it was great that way. Thanks, everybody. Go Beavers.